Okay, continuing with the videos where I show hybridizations that are higher order or bigger, I'm looking at the sp3d hybridization here. And so I have several sp3d hybridized molecules. I'm going to make their Lewis structures. I'm going to show what that looks like from a hybridization standpoint. And then I'm also going to show the shape using the hybridized orbitals and the VSEPR prediction. So first of all, ClF3, Cl. F, F, oops, F, F, so if I do the hybrid, if I do the Lewis structure for CF, CLF3, I have seven electrons plus three times seven electrons for my fluorine, which gives me a total of 28 electrons. If I put if I go and, you know, I'm just going to redo this so that I can show you. Hold on a second here. If I put my centralized chlorine in, and then I form one bond to each fluorine, and then I octet everybody, unlike my usual situation where I count up my electrons here and it either matches or my electrons are a little high and I have to reduce making double bonds, this one's going to be a little different. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24, 26, 28. Let me try that again. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. That's better. So what I see here is in this structure, there are 26 electrons. The problem is I'm supposed to have 28. So where am I going to put that extra pair of electrons? When this happens, if you have a at least an atom in chlorine's row or lower, you should always put those extra electrons on the central chlorine atom. We're going to do a video later on formal charge that's going to explain how I know that they go on the chlorine atom in a little bit more detail. But right now I want to stay focused on this as a hybridization. So I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five different bonding sites. So again, I'm only going to look at the outermost shell here for chlorine, but I have my 4s electrons, my 4p electrons, or sorry, my 3s and my 3p. But I also, because it's 3, have the d shells to work with. So this would be 3s2, this would be 3 P, it'd be at 5, but I do have these 3D shells that are existent in this situation and can engage in this hybridization as well. So let's look at this and realize that I want to form three bonds and I want to have two lone electron pairs. So what's going to happen is one of these electrons is going to get promoted and then my orbitals will hybridize. So I'll get 3s, p, 3, d, I'm using one of the d orbitals, so the sp3, d1 hybridization here. And they will look like this for five orbitals. One, two, one, two. Those are reflective of my two sets of lone electron pairs. One, one, and one. Electrons available to form the bonds with the fluorines. Okay, well, let's take a look at this actual molecule shape. So here I have, sorry five bonding sites that are containing three bonds. So five bonding sites and two lone pairs. So we're looking at here, five with three and two lone pairs. It's the T-shaped molecule. And there it is. And it shows you exactly what uh, where those lone electron pairs are as well. So the hybridization for an sp3d, sp3d, has one orbital that comes out of the top, three orbitals that represent a plane, and then one orbital that goes straight down. So these would all be in the horizontal plane. That's the sp3d hybridization. In our case, the two of the orbitals in the plane would be the ones that have the lone electron pairs, and then our resulting molecule shape would be a T, where these two are meeting at right angles because they're above and below that plane, and that's in the plane. And that's our T-shaped molecule. We're using this example, ClF3. 
So, comparing to my actual Lewis structure, CL would have two orbitals in the plane that have lone pair electrons. It would have F going straight off the side, and then one F that goes straight down, another F that goes straight up, and it would be a T-shaped molecule. So that's the Lewis structure, the corresponding hybridization, um, the corresponding hybridization, and what it ends up looking like as a molecule in a Vesper shape, the T-shape. Okay, let's go on then, and let's look at SF4. I'm going to erase all this so that I have the space back. SF4 is another example of a molecule that will end up being hybridized as an sp3d, but because it will have a different number of lone electron pairs, it will take on a slightly different shape. So Fs with four Fs around it. Arctet, everybody. Don't forget the bonds. And then count electrons. I have six from the sulfur plus 4 times 7 from each of the fluorines for a total of 34. And then if I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, I can see that I'm short two electrons. And again, I'll explain with formal charge how I know that they go in the central atom. But right now we're just going to focus on this relationship to energy level diagrams. So again, for sulfur, now I want to form four bonds. I have my lone elect I have my S2 filled, and then my P is at four because I because sulfur is over in the six valence electron category. So this is three S2, this is three P, which is sitting at four, and these three D shells exist for me to work with if I need to. Now if I look at this situation, I want to form four bonds, and right now I only have two accessible sites. But again, if I go through my hybridization process of promoting an electron, and then I hybridize all the involved orbitals, I'm going to get a 3s, p3, d1 hybridization. I still have my one lone electron pair, as shown here. And then I'd have one, two, three, four more shells that are available to form those bonds with the fluorine. So here I have four five sites for electrons with four bonds in one lone electron pair. So let's go down and look at our uh, Lewis or Vesper prediction for that. So five, four, and one, this is our seesaw shape. And here what we can see is that the lone electron pairs is on one of those orbitals that's in that that are in the three that are in the plane. So again, our hybridization is one straight up, one straight down, and then three in a horizontal plane. So this is these guys are in the plane. Okay. And now we're going to put the electrons on the lone electron pair on one of those and the fluorines on the end of each of these hybridized orbitals. And so that's going to give us what they call our seesaw shape. And you can see why they call it a seesaw, because if you set it up on two of them, then the other two look like they could be a seesaw that kids could play on, right? So if you set it on these two, then this would look like flat. So that's our hybridization of sp3d. And if I were to draw it again, s, I'd have a lone electron pair that appears in the plane. Then I'd have these f's. These are also in the plane with shared electrons. And then I'd have one that goes straight down and one that goes straight up. We call that a seesaw shape because, again, if you rotated it 90 degrees to your left here, you could see that it would look like it's a seesaw where those two fluorines represent the two spots where the kids would sit. Okay, so that's SF4. Let's do the last one here, which will be PCL5. And we'll just look at that hybridization and the resulting Lewis structure and the whole thing here. And then we'll be done with sp3. Do some sp3d2. OK, pcl5. p, cl, 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 cl. 
And octet everybody. Obviously, the center, fo center phosphorus is already not octeted, so we can't. Um, so that's not going to be octeted. We just leave it as is. But let's count our electrons. Five from the phosphorus plus five times seven from the chlorine for a total of forty. So. If we imagine each one of these atoms has eight electrons around it, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, so this already has 40, so it's good as is. So now I have five bonding sites, and I have no lone electron pairs. Let's look at the energy level diagram. Again, we're in the three level here. We have our 3s, we have our 3p, and we have our 3d. To start, phosphorus was in the third column like this. And then, or the, the third P1. And then to hybridize, it promoted an electron. And then it took all of those 3s, P3, d orbitals down to the same energy. And with its promoted electron, created space for five bonds. Coming down here, we call this one trigonal bipyramidal, where we have our three in the plane, one above and one below, and now they're all filled with chlorine atoms, so it makes a complete shape. Again, that one's called trigonal bipyramidal. Again, if you imagine, it's like you have a trigonal pyramid and another trigonal pyramid below. So looking at our sp3 dehybridization one more time, up down, and then three forming a triangle in the plane, and then you put a fluorine at the end of each, and those form a, a plane, and then that other one sits above and below the plane, respectively. So those are some examples of some sp 3 dehybridized molecules, what they look like from an energy level diagram perspective, and the resulting Lewis structure.